narrow stretch of water, only 10 kilometers wide, between Turkey and the Greek island of Lesbos. This is one of the preferred crossing points for migrants, the first stage of a very long journey. A short scouting trip aboard a fishing boat makes it very obvious. One, two, there are two bateaux. There are easily 50 people. Dinghies carrying migrants leave the shore constantly. We could count 12 of them in little more than a few hours. But all our efforts to get closer fell short. Our captain was terrified. The smugglers, he said, are armed and dangerous. So we decided to try our luck on foot, walking our way up to a remote creek we spotted earlier. Soon, discarded packaging and accessories tell us we're on the right track. Hello, hello. Hi. Then, a surprise. Hey. Hello. Hello. Out of the blue, out of nowhere, we come face to face with a long line of migrants. Where are you from? I'm from Afghanistan. They're Hello. from Afghanistan and seem as surprised as we are by the encounter. Do you have a life jacket? I don't have my wife hat. Do you have for the baby? No. No, I have this one. Most don't know how to swim. Many don't even have a life jacket. Okay, good luck. There are more than 200, all dreaming of Europe. Among them, we spot Mohamed Reza Rezai, 18, barely out of high school. I have lots of goals. I'm young. I want a better future for myself. He's here with a group of friends. I saw in news that uh, people always they migrate to Europe, you know. Uh, they go to Germany, Austria. I decided, why, why not me, you know. Mohamed Reza tells us he paid $2,000 for the boat ride. A fortune, considering his father only makes $20 a day. Of course it's not safe, you know. I take risk, I take a big risk. <coughs> <coughs> but I think it's necessary for my life. A few meters away, an Afghan family patiently awaits to board the boat. Azmiri Azimi, a farmer from Herat, has a medical condition. He wants to go to Germany to get treated there. His wife, Faimi Rasuda Zada, mostly wants to find her son she hasn't heard from since he left for Europe a few months ago. She agreed to leave Afghanistan mostly for her children, Sharayek, Arash, and 18 months old, Sataish. We bump into Mohamed Reza on the shore. He sees and touches the sea for the first time. Yeah, it, and it tastes salty. This sea, I see hope. But there is a sea between them, and I have to pass the sea, and I will pass. But the sight of a wrecked rubber dinghy on the beach shatters his confidence. When I uh, saw that boat that was sank, right now I'm really afraid, you know. Even my food is shaking. Mohamed Reza admits feeling homesick. We pass him a cell phone to allow him to call home. I just miss my little sister. She's six years old. You know, I love her, I really love her. But now it's a week that I didn't see, see her. It's too hard. The migrants are kept waiting and waiting. Most haven't slept for days. Among them, many children, toddlers, and even babies. The flotation devices they wear are decorated with cartoon characters and come with a warning not to be used on a boat. They are very young, very young, five years old, six years old babies are here. I think it's too dangerous for them. Their parents, maybe they can grab one children two children, what about the third and fourth? After hours of waiting, migrants are instructed to put on their life jacket and get ready for departure. Mohamed Reza was promised his boat would carry a maximum of 35 passengers. He's now been told 
there will actually be 50, more than two times the maximum capacity. If God wants, we will pass. And if not, all of us will die. At nightfall, smugglers take out their weapons. They point the guns at passengers and threaten them, forcing them to accept the dangerous conditions of the crossing. Mohamed Reza gets increasingly worried. Uh, the captain doesn't have any experience, any experience, experience about driving a boat. We pass him a camera to allow him to film the crossing. His footage tells the rest of the story. Overcrowded, the inflatable boat soon fills up with water. The engine stops working. The dinghy starts drifting in the middle of the Aegean Sea. At that time we were hopeless. We said that we're all dying, you know, from, you know, maybe we drown or maybe from, you know, lack of food and water. We will die. You know, it's not important how, but we will die. We were sure that we will die. They tie a shirt to a paddle in an attempt to draw a ship's attention. In vain. After drifting for five hours, passengers decide to start paddling with their bare hands. Against all odds, the strategy pays off. The dinghy gets closer to the shore and finally gets rescued after drifting for eight hours. The ordeal is over. That feeling was unbelievable. One hour before, you were sure, 100%, you were sure that you were, you were dying. But suddenly, everything changed. Looking back at these pictures, the young Afghan is convinced a miracle saved him and his buddies. Mohamed Reza feels lucky to be alive, but can't contain his anger towards smugglers who put other people's lives at risk for their own profit. The smugglers? They are the worst men, uh, the worst people in the world. They don't respect humanity. You know, I, I don't think that they are human. They're not human. The weekend Mohamed Reza and his friends crossed, more than 20 people drowned in the same waters. He's now decided to continue his trip, if only to give a meaning to all the risks he's taken so far. But the young Afghan has a message to everyone tempted to embark on a similar journey. Do not come to this journey. It's too hard, you know? Nobody, nobody come to this journey because it's very dangerous. You know, I, I was near to death, you know? I don't think the, it's worth to try it. Jean-François Bélanger, CBC News, on Lesbos Island, Greece.